So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. Um, some housekeeping things. Um, how many of you have seen me do a talk before? I just want to see. OK, that's a fair amount of you. OK, thank you very much. And uh, let me just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You may know that I've been doing this for 35 years, and this is the last talk I'm ever going to do. And so um, let me just take a minute to say that if you guys hadn't bought my books and gone to my classes and stuff, I would have had to get a job. And I don't think I could have handled that. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's just so respect. Thank you, thank you, thank you, all of it. Um, how many of you ever used a, a regex of any kind? That's almost everybody, right? Co copying and pasting. How many of you are, are, are you know, pretty badass about re re regex? No, sorry, come on. Okay. I'm hoping not to bore you, okay? Because I, I will tell you about what we're going to do. We're going to start from the basics, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll wrap it on up. My, you know, my goal is, uh, my goal is, I, I want you if, you, if you're not already good in regex, I'll make you kind of good in regex. We'll go through the things you need to know. But my approach to this is going to be a little bit different, because I want to be sure that the focus is PowerShell. I mean, part of what I'm here for is even if you know regex, I hope to teach you some things about how PowerShell does it. Because the, the commandlets and the various uh, parameters are good, but they're a little wonky. And sometimes you have to punch out to .NET in order to get this, this stuff. Um, and finally, I want to say thank you to Lisa at Brookstone. Did you notice yesterday that Jeffrey was having a little trouble sometimes where his surface would kind of like not do anything and he'd have to talk for a bit? I was sitting up front and I only noticed it because mine was doing that too. I'm thinking it's one of those Windows as a service updates that makes Windows better. And no, and seriously, I smoked it out. I have a Bluetooth mouse because it's a surface. It only has one USB port. It's not a 3.1 for some reason, but I have to do a US, USB port. And so I, I'm using, for the last like few days, I've been using my Bluetooth mouse and the system just. <laughs> and it's really annoying. And so, so I find that this is crazy. You know, I, I, need, I need a wired mouse. So yesterday after I, after I left, I, I walked over and said, where am I going to find a wired mouse? I'm in Bellevue. This is Microsoft World. I should be able to find one easily. I know. I'll go to the Microsoft Store. The Microsoft Store doesn't have wired mice because um, I couldn't figure out why. So they said I should go to the Brookstone, which was nearby. I knew that wasn't going to work. But there was nobody in the Brook Brookstone. So there was this nice woman. And she said, no, we don't, we don't do those. Uh, I don't know where you'd get one of those. I said, really? I said, because I'm doing this presentation, and I need a wired mouse. And then she said, wait a minute. She went back to her office, and she gave me her mouse. And I'm going to bring it back to her. <laughs> so without Lisa, this talk would not be possible. <laughs> so OK. Other thing, too, is um, I'm not sure what the PowerShell organizers intended. But I'm not going to talk for an hour and 45 minutes straight, because you all would kill me. And um, there would be lots of, you know, dampness in the underwear and such. So um, I, having done this for 35 years, it's real hard to sit for that long. So what I want to do is I'm going to go 50 minutes until 10 of 10. And we'll take 10 minutes. Just get out, stretch. I don't know if there's coffee or anything like that, but at least we'll get a chance to do a bio break and that sort of thing. Yes, that means there will be 10 minutes left in the, that are not in the presentation. Be sure to kill me on the evaluations for that. But anyway, so our goals in this talk, I'm assuming that, that that very few of you, you know, on the order of 10% are regex experts, you, so you probably know more about this than me, which is fine. Um, I, wanna un I want to understand why we'd use them. Because, you know, we always hear that regex is good. It would be nice to get some information about, you know, how exactly that is. Then from there, as I said, we want to we drop into, into syntax. Now, the worst thing about regex in most people's minds is the syntax. And they're probably right. Well, that's not true. I guess this, I guess this is the engine as well. But anyway. Um, we're going to start off with just a little bit of syntax, just enough to do this world's simplest regexes. And the reason we're going to do that is we're going to then go to the engine. It's been my experience that when I look at regex papers or whatever books, they all get d heavy, deep, and real about what the syntax is, you know, to write the long strings of line noise, which is great. We'll get to that. But the problem is, once you know how to do a re So how many of you have done a fair amount of regex? Let me see the hands real quickly. I want to ask these people. So you learned some regex, and within, the, within a week, did you end up writing some regex pattern that looked really good to you, but you're running a thing and it's been 
you're waiting five minutes to get the answer, and you, I've got an i7, it should be faster than this, and, and it just boils down to, if you don't know the engine, then you're wandering around in the dark. Even if I, if I could, if I could you know, give you the Vulcan mind meld, and you could learn all of the syntax, you'd still be dangerous in regex. So we're gonna go to the, the engine, so the engine is important. That's how PowerShell thinks. That will lead us to realize that there are parts of PowerShell where PowerShell becomes greedy, and I mean that in a technical sense. The sad part is, you can make it not greedy, but your only alternative to greedy is it's gotta be lazy. <laughs> I've had employees like that, but you know, it's, so anyway, uh, so we're gonna do that, and then, uh, then I wanna I wanted jump over to the specifics of running it on PowerShell, because there's, there's a couple of odd things, not odd things, but different from what you've seen in a, a Unix or Linux implementation or something like that. Uh, from there, then we will, uh, we'll meet the regexe commands. There are specific uh, regexe specific uh, commands. And then with the time that's left, we'll do that syntax. The reason I did that is very specific. I've done this talk a few times, not many times, because here was my thinking. I told some of you this before. I like to do these talks, and sometimes I run out of stuff. There's nothing interesting to me. And so what I'll do is I'll say, you know, we all have this list of stuff I really need to learn that we don't get to. And regex has been around since 1951, so we've had plenty of opportunities to, <laughs> to, to learn it. And so my thought is if I can package it up into a little talk, then I can save you guys a tremendous amount of trouble, and that way you can check that off your box of stuff I really need to know, okay? So, all right then. Um, so why regex? So, you know, the, the, the basic stuff. First of all, it's an old, well-understood tool. I mean, it is so old, it's older than me. And that's old. And so that's, and what that leads to is something that's even cooler, is that if you want to talk about a platform independent tool, this is the poster child. I mean, there is, I don't think there's an operating system on this planet that doesn't support regexes, and probably lots of other stuff too. I mean, you know, my, my phone probably knows how to do regexes. It's a sad thought, but it, it, it probably does, you know? So that's pretty nice. That means even if you never pick up PowerShell again, which would be a terrible, terrible error, then you still have the stuff that you'd need to know to, trans to use it in Unix, Linux, blah, 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 whatever, okay? So uh, we can also use it for things like input validation. I, I've written, for example, when I was building ASP scripts or something like that, the question is, somebody wants to create a password to make an account on my system, well, does the password meet our criteria, you know? Uh, what about this thing? If I'm logging, if, if someone's signing up for my newsletter, I don't run it anymore, but when I did, you know, the, the identifier, as it is for everybody, is the email. But you know that there was a problem, I guess there still is, where if you're not careful, you type, you ask for an email and somebody types a SQL injection string. Now, we, I don't know about you, but when SQL injection became a thing, which was around 02 or something like that, I was sitting down, getting ready to write some VB script in my ASP pages and say, how to get past this? And I'm really, ding, regex. And all of a sudden, life got a whole heck of a lot easier, you know? Um, we can do it to find and update text. Imagine you've got a website. Website is gonna be a folder full of text files. Maybe your company's name has changed from Acme to Ajax or something like that. And you wanna be able to make those changes. The easiest way to do it, and the Unix people have been doing it for a million years with a tool called grep. I'm sure, sure you've heard the phrase. And grep stands for? Generalized regular expression parser. That's right. See, the only we sad geeks know that stuff, you know, but just that's right. Sadly, I, I know that too. And, um, and there's, a, there's a grepoid, there, there's a grep clone. Uh, there's something that behaves very much like grep in PowerShell called select dash string, and we're gonna meet that guy as well. So a couple of, you know, a couple of, of examples I could think about is you've got a folder full of files because it's, it's your website, and you want to do a global search and replace on all the files. Or alternatively, this is another one we've all been struggling with for the last 20 years, is we have all these files that have been sitting on our computers for the last however many years. We're a university, we're a hospital, maybe we're just a, a public company, a publicly traded company. Is there any information in that that has publicly identifi identifiable information? You may know that server 2012 introduced an, a file classification infrastructure. But if you wanted to be able to type in the things you want to look for, they gave you two options. B star, you can use that. Anything snazzier, 
you got to go to regex. And in the last 10 years, Microsoft has been doing this more and more. So you're going to find that even if you don't use PowerShell, this is going to be useful stuff. And the best thing, how many of you are OneNote users? Okay, great, because if you're not, if you're a PowerShell, if you're a PowerShell user and you're not a OneNote user, I hope you're an Evernote user, because I don't know about you, but if something takes me more than 30 seconds to figure out in PowerShell, I copy and paste it into my OneNote, which is on my phone and it's on my, my you know, iPod, I, iPad and all that kind of stuff, which is just absolutely lovely. I have everything on OneNote, but you know what OneNote can't do? It can't do regular expression searches. If I could do regular expression searches on my OneNotes, I'd never have to leave the house. <laughs> I did, oh, it's a, it is actually a feature request. It's been on voice, on the OneNote voice, for the last okay, two years or something like that. But go vote it up. Go vote it up in one day. One day. Anyway, now what's it bad for? Well, you know, it, it's not a parser. It can parse a little bit, but it's, it, 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 it manages, excuse me, it matches the, the patterns. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a, not a parser. So you still end up having to write parsing code if you're doing this stuff. Um, it's quite odd looking, as I've already said a couple times, it looks like line noise. It is said to be hard. You know, once you get into it though, it's kind of addictive and let me suggest right now that if you want to play with this, get on the web and there are about a million sites that have a list of all the English words. These lists are good or bad, it doesn't matter. But if you've got, you know, tens of thousands or, you know, hundreds of thousands of words, it could be tremendous fun. Because at that point, you can, you know, even if you're not cheating in crossword puzzles, it can be, I just find it fun to say, are there, you know, for example, is there, I came up with this question this morning I haven't answered yet, which is, are there any English words that start with the word X and have two vowels next to each other afterwards? So, this kind of stuff we can all find out. Anyway, now, not everything's good, it's not good at everything. You think that, when we think about text processing, the discovery of palindromes could be interesting. Things that are same forward and backward, noon, uh, civic, stuff like that. It's not particularly good. It, at least I've never figured out how to do a general purpose palindrome detector. If you told me a length, like you said, it's an eight character word, then I could, I could write that, that regex, okay? So, so let's start from regexes. The, uh, the, by the way, also, as I think you've seen in these talks, please ask questions. If something's not clear, uh, remember that when I'm talking tech stuff, it's the 10% it's the that are laughing with me and don't think by being quiet that that's good. No, I mean, if, if something I said doesn't make sense, if I forget to define something, please, please tell me. So, uh, so the notion is that a, you need a, re a regex pattern and your regex pattern needs, I'm using my, yes, I'm using my surface, which means unfortunately I, I can't read this as well. So there's a regex, the notion is we get a string and the string is what you want to find the patterns in. So you've got this big pile of text and you're searching for some word or something like that. That text is called the target string. So people just say the target, some people say the string. And then there's the pattern itself, the regex pattern itself. And the regex pattern can be as simple as regular old text. So the simplest stuff is just regular old literals. For example, if you want to see if there's any Bs in the text, just search on B. That's the actual pattern. In this case, we've got a very simple one, just B-E. That's, that's all there is to it. What will it match? Well, it will match. It's going to try to apply itself to the target information. So for example, if we said something like to be or not to be, how does regex work? Well, we're going to see more, more, in more detail. But the notion is the B matches that B. And the E matches that E, so we're happy. That was a match. Okay? But notice that the way regex normally works, and it can, be, it can change its behavior, but by default, regex's only question is what? Is there a match? Because if we say to be or not to be, how many B's are there in there? There's at least two. And yet regex in general, you heard the weasel words, there's a way to adjust these things, but regex in general, Leftmost first. I'm going to say that again. I'll have a slide on that, but leftmost first. Notice also it doesn't always necessarily match the places you'd imagine. Of course, when, we say, when you say, for some reason, if the B is in the first letter, we don't tend to think of like Abe wouldn't jump out of us as having, having a, a B. And notice also, if we say, many consider Abe Lincoln to be the best president. Well, we, that, not, we, haven't, you know, we haven't hit that B. Make sense? That's the easy one. Good. Great, great, great. Um, 
And th in that case, that part of the pattern are called literals. The alternative is a meta character. Meta character is a wild card. But the thing is, they are, the one I'm going to show you is dot. Dot says any one piece of text. So it's a wild card, but it's a wild card that's taking its meds, you know? And so, so that would mean, so if we have that pattern, this guy, meta characters dot, it, ma it match matches any single character. So B dot, now dot matches anything, but there has to be something there. And so B dot would match, as you see here, if we say BE dot, we need to match a B and an E and then anything. So we got that, B and an E, you got, got to have that E. Bet, a bet, antebellum, bear. It would not match just B. If the target string were just B, it would not match. And why? Because the B would match B, the E would match E, and the dot would have nothing to do. So it would not be sufficient. Make sense? That's an important point. The reason I stress that is that all of you know the asterisk wild card that's existed in the Windows world for, you know, longer than the beginning of time. And, and that, that one, that one's easy going. You can give it nothing and it still matches. With a dot, that is not the case. Okay? Um, oh, yes, please. Uh, would it match if the string was BE space? Would it match if the string was BE space? I think so. Yes, I think so. Because dot matches everything except for the new line character. Right. So, so I'm. Space. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or my favorite is when I accidentally saved the text file as Unicode. That never works well with uh, the, the regex. You know. But that leads to the next question. Whenever we see a meta character, my question is always, oh, wait a minute, I want to be able to use that thing, you know? And so uh, what if I wanted to use a, a period? Well, if you've done any Unix work or C work or anything you know, out of that part of the universe, then you will not be surprised. But if not, it's a backslash. Backslash tends to be what we call in programming languages an escape character. I don't know what its official word is in, in, uh, in, in um, regex. So, and so for his, his, uh, the extreme example I can think of was if you wanted to do will I am, that's the way that you would do that. Where the, where the dots would be, you have to have backslash dots. Does that make any sense? Questions, anybody? Okay. You guys got all quiet. I just, it's like, like this. You're a pin drop. I'm going to mention, the, uh, the, I have a reference slide here about these other meta characters. We're going to meet all those guys as, as time goes on here, okay? So it's all well and good to talk about regexes, but wouldn't it be nice to be able to try one out? Well, there are a lot of things in PowerShell that will use regexes, but the basic one is you could take any string and use dash match. And by the way, a little sidebar here. If you've done PowerShell for a while, you probably know the comparison operators. And if you've only done it for a little time, you've probably learned dash EQ is, is equals and dash NE is not equals. And, and then you probably also learned early on that dash EQ doesn't like wildcards. So if we're doing Active Directory stuff and I say Sam account name dash EQ J star, I'm not going to get everybody whose name starts with J. You'd have to have an actual name of J asterisk. Got a J low, why not a J asterisk? I don't know, you know, but J star. So, um, and in that case, what do you got to use? The like operator. Well, you knew that. Most of you knew that. EQ is exact equal. Dash like lets us use wildcards. What everyone forgets is that 85% of the time, whatever that, whatever that commandlet is, will also take dash match. Now, that doesn't always happen. A lot of what I do is Active Directory stuff, and when I'm teaching people beginning PowerShell, I want to get them into it, you can't just teach PowerShell in a vacuum. It's nice if you can point it at something. I like Active Directory because pretty much everybody understands enough about Active Directory. But it's a sad thing that when you do Active Directory's most generic retrieval tool is get dash ad user in case you don't know. And you could have, you know, you could do the usual comparisons. It's sad to see though that there is no uh, dash match in Active Directory. Bummer. But it's because of the way it's built under the hood. But there's ways to get around it, of course. So the way this works is that I, I have my target string, and I apologize because I have to point at the screen, but I don't want to talk to the screen, so I'm coming back to you to do this. And if it looks strange, it is, sorry. So 
that's our target string. And I want to see whether sh is in there. And the way I do it is I just say, there's the string, which of course could be a, a, a variable or something coming across the pipeline, whatever. And dash match, and then sh. The response, which you will get on the console, is a true or a false, rather, rather, than, rather than that. Dollar sign true or dollar sign false, right? Yes? Doesn't that bother anybody? Doesn't dollar sign true bother you? Well, dollar signs, okay, why is there a dollar sign in the front of a variable name? No, because they cost memory. But, but that means the dollar sign true is a variable, and truth is not variable. That's wrong. What's wrong with this country? <laughs> I know we do constant stuff. Anyway, so there we see. Um, and additionally, you don't see it unless you ask for it. But there is a matches, which is an array because we'll be able to put lots of we'll see lots of stuff in it later. And so, if we do this, if we say PowerShell like that, and then I also I not only want to see the result, but I also want to see matches. I see true, and I see what it matched. We were looking for sh period, and it matched she. That's super important. It's particularly super important when you're just getting started. Because if all PowerShell tells you is true or false, you matched it, you don't know whether you almost matched it. <laughs> this is a case where almost isn't what you're looking for. I mean, if you're lazy, you can, because it's easy to build sloppy filters, you know, or, excuse me, sl sloppy patterns. So, that's the reason I always say to people, if you haven't done this before, start out with the dollar matches uh, and zero. Notice it's zero because by default, even if there's 15, 15 things that could match, we always get which the first one, which by the way also, I'm going to say it again, is the leftmost. Always remember the rule of the leftmost when it comes to regex. Any questions on that? Hmm? Well, now dot's nice, but that's not what I want. I mean. I want those wild, wild cards, the ones that haven't been taking their meds for a while. The ones that I say, go forth and suck down the universe, and they do that. You know, all in RAM in no time at all. So very, very exciting stuff. Now, so, in, so if we have a pattern B, B dot P, okay, so that's only going to match, you know, one character. So it's, it's a wild card. So as I say there, you see that I did the stuff in color. And by the way, did I pick an OK font? Can you guys read this in the back OK? Uh, Okay, if you can't, just let me know. We could just do the old, you know, magic blow up thing, right? So, anyway. Thank you, Dr. Rusinovich. And, uh, <laughs> and so uh, it'll match oboe, it would match able, but not bone. Because, again, those of you who know regex wouldn't even think this. But beginners tend to see, oh, well, let's see, that's a, a bone. So there's a, where was my bone? Uh, bu, 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 bu. Which bone? There it is. Is that, oh, got a B, that matches, we got an O, that matches. Ah, oh, we just skipped that one and that, yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that because dot is positional and it only takes one character, okay? So sometimes it would be nice to say, I don't want to worry so much about it. Maybe I want a little more open-ended. And the more open-ended thing is not an asterisk, as you'd expect from the stuff that we do. It's the dot, which we already have. And then after it, you can put a plus or as you'll see later, an asterisk. We'll talk about an asterisk in a moment. The plus's job is it says, it modifies, that's an important thing, technically it's called a quantifier, that modifies the behavior of dot. And so, and so it says, okay dot, where, where is it, uh, there we go. So okay dot, I see dot here, and then there's an asterisk after it, and that means now, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you about the asterisk. Asterisk means zero or more matches. Plus means one or more matches. That's important. That's a big distinction. You, you'll get it quickly if you haven't done this before, but it is a thing we all trip over at some point. Uh, because what is dot star? Dot star is the old asterisk that we've known for ages. It'll match a null, it'll match a nothing, and it'll match a thousand characters if you want. Okay? That making sense? All right, good. And always when you're getting started, try to think like PowerShell. I mean, play PowerShell in your head, you know. So, so for example, this guy, uh, B plus E matches bear. Well, now, now why, okay? So, because it's B, A, and actually it doesn't do that, I'm sorry. Um, if I did, that, sorry, that one does. Because there's B, 
and then this matches the A and the Y, and then I've got the E. Does that make it sense? Great. Experts, I know I'm boring you. Beginners, is this making sense? So it just returns A. What's that? It just returns matches the set. <coughs> I'm sorry, say, second place. Yeah, Which? B A Y E. Okay. Oh, for the start. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Other thing to know about regex. Oh, please. Hi. Can you explain the dot again? Sure. Dot says anything goes in here. So, for example, if I had a a pattern G dot O S T, then ghost would match there. Okay. But if there were a grossed, that wouldn't. You, couldn't, you can't fit two, two characters in there. Again, that's the thing that's, if you're new to regex, because we're, I don't know about you, we're so used to that asterisk that we've been using for, since the dawn of time. Good question. Other questions, anybody? Great. Is the question mark written applied as well, where it means that it's not in the, the, oh, good question. Yeah, 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 yeah. DOS had a sync, that's right. The, the question mark in DOS, I don't even know it works anymore, but the question mark in DOS did, did dot, because it was just one character. It was a wild, char wild card for just one. That's exactly right. I forgot, and I haven't used that in like ages, but you know, it's, but it's still there. Cool. Yeah. What's that? Oh, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking about in DOS. You know, excuse me, when I said DOS, in the command line interface. <laughs> DOS. I think we're on to trace and quattro by now, you know. So. Anyway, so, uh, Yes, good questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, what else? Anything else? Uh, yes, please. So the, the question is, where do I have to place uh, the the, uh, the the where do you have to place the plus or the asterisk? So the plus and the asterisk are close cousins. They do almost exactly the same thing. They are quantifiers, which means they come after the pattern. So, for example, if I wanted to say uh, if I just wanted a string of E's, then my pattern would be E, because that's the pattern, and then I'd have a plus. Why no dot? Because I'm saying, the pattern I'm looking for is E, and I want all of them I can get. So an E with a plus, that says match how many E's? One to a million. Okay? Thank you. Anybody else got any questions? All right, great. Let's go. Let's see how the engine works. So the, the regex engine, this is how things actually happen. And I should mention there's some, there is some regex terminology I should be sharing with you. One is when we have a pattern like that, the pattern is composed of pieces. I call them chunks. Most people call them chunks. The correct phrase is atoms. And an atom is a, a, a single unit that gets something done. Now, there's some distinctions here. Important to get this. A literal, like B, that is an atom. E, the E next to it, that's an atom too. But this guy, dot plus, dot plus together is an atom. And why? Because who's the main event there? Dot. What does plus do? It's a quantifier. It says, OK, you like this? We can have this many of them. Questions? Great. Thank you. All right, so we talked about that. Um, the engine scans, the, as we've already seen, the engine scans you left to right, trying to match things one at a time. And so, basically, I want to show you how the engine matches. And I have been trying for quite a while to build a graphic to, to do this. So I'm going to come over here, because so, I want to narrate. And uh, I need to be able to, there we go. Otherwise, I'll look dumb when I'm doing this. So dumber. So here's the deal. I got a pattern. My pattern is going to be B, B-E. Doesn't get easier than this. I'm going to ask the question, is B-E in the word a beam? And yes, it's a trivial question, so of course you saw that that was the answer. So how do we find that, though? Conceptually, if you want to understand the regex engine, and you do, think about three cursors, three pointers, whatever you want to call them. The first one says, where am I in the pattern? That's the red one. Let's see. Sorry, I should say. That's the red one, OK? And 
that keeps track of what we're currently matching. Then there's, this is the target, this is the target string. Think of this as the cursor that says, this is where we're going to try to match. And you'll see another one in a minute. So the first thing that happens, we start off like that. The, on the pattern, we're pointed at the first letter there, the leftmost, which is B. And on the target, we are. And now the engine says, are they the same? And the answer is, well, heck, they are. Hot diggity. When that happens, don't touch the red. Touch, bump the green. So we bumped the green, so, that, so there was no match. So now we've moved, this thing has moved from there to there. It's gone from A to B. Everybody with me on this? Okay. Because this could be a terrible graphic. I made this up last night, and I'm hoping that this is the ultimate answer. Because previously I just had to have two laser pointers, the red and the green, so that we could keep track of what was happening. <laughs> and, oh no, I've really done this uh, several, on several occasions. I did this in Slovenia about a year ago, well, a little less than that, and uh, had more people in a talk than has ever been at the Slovenian show in the last 25 years. So dual laser pointers are the trick to getting you know, better attention as a speaker. So, um, so where are we now? It's that we're still pointing at the B in the pattern, because that, that doesn't move. We bump this guy over. Is that a B? Is that a B? Yes, it is. Hot diggity, we've got a match. When we have a match, we bump them both. Now, have we finished our job yet? No. Why have we not finished our job? Well, we, got, we put this guy to work, but we haven't put this guy to work yet. So what do we got now? So we're happy. Notice that we've got a partial match. That's what I got, that's what I got in that orange color there. And now we've moved everything over, and the question is, is E equal to E? That's a toughie. But yes, we're going to say that is. And that means hot diggity. We're going to keep, what do we do? We bump red and green. But what does that do? Oh, uh-oh. Red's got nothing left. What does that mean? We matched great. Is that making sense? Yeah. I know that was easy, but we had to do an easy one, OK? Let's get, we get a little more complicated, and then a little more complicated. We're going to do two more. All right, so far? No more, no more pattern. Success, success. <coughs> Questions on this? We good? Because if you get this, once you get the engine, you can leave. The rest is easy. Just, you know, you read it off cheat sheets. So, <laughs> red, judge, red judge concept, the left shall be first. Okay? It always works that way. The interesting thing about it is there are times that if you've done some weird stuff with wild cards, which we, you know, we end up doing with meta, meta characters, Sometimes you'll look at what you actually got and say, how on earth does anyone think that's the leftmost? But that's why we're doing the engine. OK, let's do a second one. This, was, this one wasn't interesting, because the first time we found a partial match, it turned out to be great. But what if, what if it wasn't a beam, so we'd match the B? Maybe it's about or something like that. So it would be like, hey, we got a B, we're really happy, and now we're going to match the E with the O, and you can't match E with an O, so we have to start over. So let's do a situation where we do a, a, a we have a, a, a failed partial match and then have to backtrack a bit. Backtrack is a bad phrase in human conversation, but in the regex world, you'll use the word backtrack a lot. Okay? So here's our deal. I want to, and we're going to add a third cursor here. So here's my question. Regex, is there BE in imbibe? I did this specifically because I was thinking about this, this uh, summit, because I've been to all of these, and there's a lot of imbibing. So I thought that would be interesting. <laughs> Can we be in imbibe? And so hopefully not now, but still, you know. So same as before. All sessions in 401 have been canceled for the rest of the day because Manassi is a clumsy idiot. So, so, red cursor here, green cursor here, sorry. Red cursor here, green cursor here. And so our first thing we look at, does, does B equal I? No match. What do we do? We bump the green, leave the red where it was. Moved over here. Now it's our next question. Does M match? It doesn't match. Bump the green. Is this making sense? Is it starting to feel normal? Is it starting to feel like, yeah, you know? And so 
So now what happens? So now we're trying to match a B to a B to a B. A B, finally. Excellent. I'd be so happy just knowing that I've done that. So because we had, because we did that, when we get a match, we, we, we bump the red and the green, OK? And before we do, we have a partial match, right? We've already got a B to B. We might have to backtrack. If we've got to backtrack, we have to remember where to start. Where did we start off when we started looking for this? Well, we already rejected this. We rejected this. We rejected this. If this goes wrong, we're going to back up to the, the, I, the point after this. So we're going to create an extra little cursor there that says, if, the, if we screw up, you go back to this guy and go to the one after that guy. All right. So we're going to remember we last started from B. That didn't work. Now we're going to start from I next if it doesn't work. We try to be positive, you know? So all right. So that's where we are now. We have, we have a partial match. We have a partial match. We've got a B. And we're hoping that the next thing will be good, OK? Now we try to say, uh oh, well, let's see. So, we, so the B matched. After the B comes an E, and after the B comes an I. Oh, E does not equal I. Bummer. So we've got to go back for another pass. This is where we're going to do the backtrack. The notion is we're going to move back to the last position that we didn't start from, from the, most, the rightmost position that we didn't start from last time. So what are we going to do now? We start like that. Notice that we have moved our starting point before. When we got our almost pattern, we were at B. And we remembered that because it had the blue cursor on it. We go to the next one. So now we're starting from I. Does E equal I? It does not. What are we going to do now? Don't touch the red. Bump the green. Bump the green. By the way, if you have ever written a regex engine or you know the deep internals of the regex engine, it is more complex than this. But this is close enough that it's a mental model that you can use in order to get a feel for what your system's doing or not doing. All right? So, um, so with, with, with that in mind, uh, so now we're, we got B and B. That's, that's good. We're happy. Once again, let's remember that because if this fails, we're going to have to go to the next character. And then we bump. And so now we have E and E. What does that mean? Because the next thing we would do is that I should move the red arrow over. That would mean we've satisfied the pattern and we're done. We did indeed demonstrate that we can be in imbibe. OK? Questions? Please. What if the I was actually a B? What if the I was actually a B? OK. Oh, great, great, great. So what would end up happening there would be that we had we rolled off the end. What, what, you, what you'd find is that eventually this, this guy would, eventually we would run out of, out, of, out of target. If we run out of target and we haven't matched, then that means it was a fail. That's a dollar sign false rather than dollar sign true. Does that make sense? You're looking like I'm, I'm completely wrong. Yeah, that's not what I asked. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do it again. If the I, you know, I can see things like this. If the second I in imbibe was a B, right? Oh, oh, okay. The second I was a B. Was it? So it was a B. So it would be I M B B B E. Okay. So uh, it would then what would end up happening? Oh, it would keep doing this. I'm almost matched, but then I'm not. I'm almost matched, but not. I'm not. But then how do you back up? to look for a new match. So you just keep going back. Keep back keep. So, 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 so the idea is, let's say that I match. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't include it. But so let's say I, I, I match on this B. I remember that that's where I matched at, mm -hmm. okay, where, I, where I got a partial match. When that fails, I've got to remember this B. Because if I don't remember this B, then I don't know where to get started. Well, so I'm matching the B as much as it is the position on the line that it's analyzing. Don't think of it as matching the B. Position. No, no, I, I, I think he's asking a great question. You're, you're basically asking, what if there's no match? I mean, how do we know that there's, well, there's no match? Right? Well, no, okay. I'm saying. Then I'm being stupid. I apologize. Yeah. No, please. No, no, I'm just trying to ask him. Uh, he's trying to draw us about multiple partial matches, I think, right? So yeah, it's a, it's a partial match. So you've got B, B, I did not match. I'm sorry. B, B does not match B, E. But then you have to figure out, oh, I have to look at the it, it, second uh, B and go back and match that with the first B. Right. I may have done an incomplete representation of the puzzle. I'm sorry, I'm just trying right. to get, but yeah. So I, I think honestly, what would happen here. Thank you. And talk to me later, because I want to. And back to back, because you mentioned the top of the blue one. Yeah, and back to back, right? The, 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 the last 
step on the previous slide right. would just be done again, one character over. So you would just keep. No, I, I, no, I think he's found a niche condition where I screwed up. In, in which case, I'll go back and look at it. But does everybody get the basic idea? Yeah. The basic idea is we try to match, we try to match, we try to match. When we get a little bit of a match, great. If we get, if we, if we, if we exhaust it, terrific. We got a, a match. If not, oh, we got a partial one. We got to forget about that. Back up a bit. Not back to where you were doing before, but the next one because you don't want to you know, have an empty loop. And you slowly step your way through the target until you either fall off the end, which means that you had a false on the, on the target. Or you find something in which case it's good. Okay, and I apologize. I, I promise we'll talk about this in greater detail later. Okay, because it, it, you, you might have caught something. I want you know. Since I want this award-winning presentation to be. You know, <laughs> So we saw two of them. We saw a relatively straightforward one. Then we saw one that involved a little bit of backtracking. But here's the one that's really fun. Now let's add a wild card that's off its meds. Okay. Our old friend dot plus or star. Uh, excuse me, dot plus or dot star. One, one of those. And so let's imagine that my target string, because again I've hung out with you guys other se sessions, is going to be beer house. That seemed like a, you know, that's where the imbibing would happen. And so the question would be. Can I find, can I find B dot plus E? Okay, so remember, you read this expert spell already. B dot plus E. Now, half of you said to me when I said, what are you here for? Why do you want to use regex? What do you want to learn? Half of you said, you know the problem is? When I write one, I can't read them anymore. And yes, we believe, many people believe that regex is a write-only language. <laughs> one, one could argue. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem though is you have to be really careful. Remember how I said just don't take the true or false like what's actually batching? Because if you, it's really, there are times it's late Friday and you're like, yes, this is working. Nah, I haven't actually looked at what the match is. <laughs> and it works for three months and all of a sudden the phone call arrives at 3 a.m. You don't want to be, you know, in the time zone at that point. So, all right, so what's the title look like? It looks like a B. What is that? That's a literal? What is dot, what is dot plus mean? It's it, it, it got to be one. What character? It doesn't care. Anything that matters, including spaces. Who exposed me before? That's, 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 there we go. Um, so that's great. So we, we're looking for something that looks like B, at least one character I haven't specified, but maybe. This is important. You know wild cards. You know star. Star leads you down the wrong road. This one not only can consume all characters, you have to get a truck in front of it to make it stop. The job of this thing, that guy, dot, dot E, that's, excuse me, dot plus, its job is to go forth and just from that point just consume everything in the string. Because that's my job, I can. Why are you doing it? Because I can. It's a dumb phrase, isn't it? Because I can. I can treat my own urine. That just does not seem like it. <laughs> 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 What's that? Dodgeball reference. I don't know who that is. Why do I drink my own urine? Because it's sterile, and I like the taste. So. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, no, I, I, no, I, just, you know, that is a fallacy. The reason people, people think that urine is sterile because a, a German chemist was writing about it. Remember, this, this, this original article was in German, which means no Americans ever read it. And <laughs> look, you know, look, 75 years ago, all the technical uh, stuff was in. But what he said, what he actually said was, the amount of of viruses, mess, and whatever else you would find in urine is small enough that we can consider it to be zero. But so, just understand. <laughs> don't, don't drink your urine. It's important not to drink your urine. Some of the wine around here might taste a lot like it. <laughs> I meant in some in some restaurants. I was not I was not impugning the the lovely West Coast wine. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody had a question. Somebody. Yes, please. So, uh, more or less a question about the matches that come out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, this is not urine. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to So you're using regex to validate? Uh, so, so say you do a regex, right? You have the example of, of she rather than, right. you know, like. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or uh, whatever the example is. You have three-letter match instead of the two-letter match. Or reverse that. Um, anyway, if you wanted to validate the output of those matches in PowerShell, and really the only way to make sure that you were getting the correct, like, limits would be. Hang on, hang on. I guess I'm not saying, what do you mean validate the matches? I mean, so you said that potentially you could write a regex that would return a Oh, yeah, yeah, match. not what you expect. Yeah, yes, yes, that exactly. happens all the time. So not what you expect. So right. if you do the, the number count, right, could you take that match and say, I mean, I know you can build more complex regex, but I'm just saying for the sake of argument. Sh short, answer, short answer, that's a great question. I don't know, and I, I don't have enough excess CPUs to answer the question at the moment. <laughs> but no, but seriously, my email is markupmanashi.com. It will be until I'm dead, unless I get married. No, that, that wouldn't work. Anyway, so, <laughs> so um, uh, you know, I mean, anything that you don't get answered, send me an email, and I'll do my best to get your question. Other questions, anybody? Are you going to walk through this one? Absolutely. I'm gonna walk. Oh, no, that's why we're doing this, so we can walk through this one. This is fun. No, I'm serious, because the first time you see it, like, you say a bad word. You, know? you say holy before it, so it's not that bad, but still. <laughs> I mean, hell, if distinguished fellows can use the F word on, a, on stage, then. <laughs> Are you dissing my friend Jeffrey Snowden? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not sure another distinguished fellow. Sorry. <laughs> he's not a distinguished fellow anymore. He's a CTO of Azure now, so he's no longer distinguished. He has some new title now. So, but when I have dinner with him tomorrow night, I'll tell him he said that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, so what are we doing here? We're saying, give me a B. That's easy. Give me an E. That's easy. What's in the middle? I'm not sure. Okay. So let's just see what happens. So the plus quantifier again, what does it do? It says one or more, right? One or more. OK. So we're going to try to match B dot plus E. And again, what is dot plus? As many dots as we can get from one to whatever. Zero does not count. All right. So again, our red's in place is the way you expect it. On the first item, the, this, oh, by the way, I should mention also, look at that, little B versus big B. Nobody asked, asked me that question. Most, every other regex I know of, Um, any of the regexes that I know start out case sensitive, and you've got to tell them to be insensitive. PowerShell, however, just starts out insensitive. That is <laughs> I can't speak to those things. But, um, yeah, so, the, so PowerShell out of the box, PowerShell regex out of the box. And by the way, you, what you guys just said was funny, but it's not true. .NET regex, which is what PowerShell regex is built on, is case sensitive by default. You have to tell .NET, .NET reg regex to be, um, to be in, 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 <coughs> insensitive. Yes, exactly. So, sorry, it's just a, you know, being a nice guy, referring to anybody by the name of by the word insensitive makes me feel bad. So, so this does match. This would not match on, on most other regexes without some adjustment. Well, great. So we've got a match. We're really happy about that. What do we do? We bump the green, left the red in place, right? Oh, sorry, we did not do that. Forgive me. Those are, we, we matched, so they both move. Great. So the B matches a B. All right. Now we've got a dot plus. Because remember, how many atoms are in this? Three. Three, exactly. That's an atom, that's an atom, that's an atom. OK, great. So that means that we've matched the B. Now we've got to find out what happens with beer, with, with, the, with the, the dot plus. OK. Now, so the question is, what do we have on this side? We've got some text starting here. We have a dot plus. How much of that is matched by dot plus? And I, I gave it away on the PowerPoint, but why did I do that on the PowerPoint? What does dot plus have the power to do? Suck up everything. Now, your rational brain, having seen lots of other things, says, well, no, it must just step along and step along and step along. Until, no, it doesn't do that. What it does is it says, mines, all mines. And so, bam, that's it. So at this point, have you ever turned the speakers on while you're using regex? Yeah, you should, see? So that would be awesome. If Microsoft had like a sound producing regex, that would be neat. Ooh, oh, damn. Oh, good. Hot dog. So. Yeah. I 
is a, a business opportunity there. Hey, it's time I said we're going to take a break. So uh, let's take 10, OK? Get out, get a stretch. Come on, do it. You, you, you know how. It's hard to sit there and learn things. And come ask me questions. That, 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 I, don't, I don't need a break. What was it Snover said yesterday about what we're supposed to do? <laughs> okay, welcome back. Welcome back. How's everybody doing? Everybody happy so far? Yep. We're, about, we're about the halfway point. I said to you, I said to you that it is often the case that I don't finish the slides. Okay? That's why I'm doing the, the you, you know in school they teach you the, the journalistic inverted pyramid. I'm trying to do the important stuff first. If we don't get to the syntax stuff, it's easy. It's right there. There's examples, there's stuff you can type and all that kind of stuff. But this engine you gotta get. Okay, questions on what we're doing so far? Good. Okay, good. All right then. So where were we? So we, we found that B match B, that wasn't a surprise. And we found out, again, the reason I'm doing this this, uh, this uh, particular example is that people don't get that this is what this is what top plus does. It's just it's it's a wild man. So what have we got now? So now we're in a situation, let's see what's what's going on there, right? Is it it just eats everything. So now we're in a situation where we have matched. We have matched the B. We have matched the dot plus. Good so far. But then we have an E. Do we have an E over here that's left over that can match? Look closely. You want to say, yes, the E's right there. But dot plus has already grabbed it. Is there an E at the end? There's not. Because dot plus has sucked it all up, mine, mine, all mine, the batch fails. Does that make sense? Well, I don't know about you if that makes me sad. What's the answer? The answer is backtrack. With backtracking, what you do is that first we match the B, and then there was all this stuff, and there's my E over here. But I'm dot plus, ate that one too. There's no E for me, we've got to stop. Now the engine backtracks. It says, OK, dot plus, a little bit of lithium, but let's just back up one, OK? So now, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry, back, back this up. Um, so now what we want to do, I haven't got this part of the animation yet, but the idea is that we're, it used to have everything. We've now backed dot plus off. So what do we have? B matched B. Dot plus matched all of this except for the E. Why? Because we backed it off. So B is happy. B's got B. Dot plus has everything almost. Is there an E at the end of this now? Is there a free E at the end of Beerhaus? Yes, there is. Because we backed up one. So if there wasn't, they would go back to the last E in beer? Thing. If there wasn't if, an E at the end of house. If that hadn't worked, it would keep backtracking. Okay. So like when I was doing some thing where I was grabbing HTML and I was trying to parse that, I was being lazy. And I said, here, find this stuff, and that's what this data is, and just keep going. And occasionally I would get HTML where it would, it would just go off to La La Land because this back, I mean, think about the exponential nature of this. What if I've got a bunch of case? So it's like, first we do backtrack, 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 and what if the next time, you know, as we step over, we have to do more backtrack, backtrack, backtrack. So backtracking can make life really miserable, but we have to have it in order to get wild parts working. If we were at PowerShell Summit Germany and we were going to a beer house, then we'd be fine. Exactly, there'd be no E. Right. Be, yeah. yeah, and we'd have to backtrack all the way back to the E. And but we'd have to wait and put the verbs at the end. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, so uh, so we totally don't, don't don't want that to happen, and that's why the that's. Because this is silly. I mean, it'll get the job done, but it's really slow. What we'd like to do instead is we have the alternative. Now, this, this behavior is called greedy. I told you there's something called greedy. That's it. The behavior is called greedy. We have to instead make it la lazy. I wish they'd come up with better words. So your choices are you can have greedy or lazy. Uh, <laughs> have I mentioned I'm retiring in an hour? You know? <laughs> It's an interesting thing about IT. It's like I did a talk about 10 years ago about IPv6, an introduction to it. And I would ask the crowd, no, I say to the crowd, 
So how many of you looking at the IPv6? How many of you hoping that you'll be able to retire before IPv6? And all the hands go up, right? <laughs> anyway, so to, to do that, all we have to do is we just have to change our pattern a little bit. Where's it go? We've got to put a question mark in it. So here we see, here's the original, this is the easy match. This is, I, so my, my, my target, dollar T, is, be, is beer house, okay? Then I've got dollar M is gonna be my match, the result of whatever the match is, okay? So I say dollar T dash match BE. What, what comes back? Comes back that it's true and that we match BE. That makes sense? We saw that before, that was easy. Then we said, hey, wait a minute, let's do the greedy thing. If we do the greedy thing, just think about what happens here. What matched? Beer house. How much, how much of that string got used? All of it. Here's what I said to you. I said, find me a match that is B, some stuff, and E. If I said to you, beer house, if I said B, some stuff, and E, what would you think the answer would be? Well, for me, I think B matches B, dot matches E, and E matches E. So it should be B, E, E. You not, right? I mean, don't you, if, I mean, if I had talked about the engine and said, here, find me a B followed by, I don't care, followed by E, you'd be like, simple, Mark, what are you? Blind? Yeah, getting there, but I mean, still, you know, B, E, E. But no, what did we get? We got the whole beer house. Wait a minute, that's nuts. That's just nuts. That's a side effect of greed. That's why we got the beer house. <laughs> it sounds like fun, but it's not going to end well. <laughs> Never does. Although having one is good, cold. particularly, you know, during the disease, you know, the, during the cold season, because it's, you know, beer is, you know, good for what ails you. So, anyway, ar, 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 ar. <laughs> but if you're in Seattle, it'll be a bitter L. <laughs> oh, stick around, it gets worse. <laughs> so, so what happened there was when, when we did Greedy, the, we matched, but the pattern we matched was all of Beer House. Now let's talk about Lazy. How does Lazy work? Well, the way Lazy works is that with Lazy, B matches B, Dot plus is now in lazy mode. It's like, I'm so not taking, you know what? I'm over material goods. I do not want a lot of stuff. But it's my job, so I'll take one. And then we'll see. Okay, so now, now B's match B. Dot is match E. What's the only thing left? E. It makes a very big difference whether we're lazy or greedy. Because a greedy pattern, what did it get? the whole string. Did I do that too fast? Does that make sense? Someone yell if I get <laughs> This is a, a slightly trivial case for, for the, the, the lazy dot plus. Absolutely. But otherwise, in a non-trivial case, it would go one by one. Yes, absolutely. One. So, no, so, so if, if there weren't a match, right, what would happen? In that case, dot plus would do what? It would say, on the first pass, OK. Uh, we got that, that's not it yet, but I'll take a, you know. it just keeps, but it takes them one at a time and then sees if there's an E after it. Right. That's, that's the way it works. Oh, you're not an E? Okay. And, and, well, and, I'll and, take you, but. I mean, and as you said, this is about as trivial of an example right. as I can give you. Imagine how in the real world, if you're trying to do, you're actually searching for bunches of stuff, this is how these things can, can, can get exponential in terms of time. Question. If you had multiple paragraphs and the first paragraph began with a B, Last paragraph ended in the E in that first. So the, when you say paragraph, so you, so you get an to actual line. On this, on this, uh, new line thing? Uh, yeah, you get a new line break. Will that pass by the new line? Good, that's, that's, a, that, that's a great question. So, like, so what you're saying, like, I'm handing you a document, some text file, oh, and the B starts in one paragraph. Um, there's some extra wrinkles with well, new lines. Okay, so I will get to it. Basically, the, so the standard behavior is is the dot matches everything except the new line. You can change you know, so that's called multiple. You would stop at the new line. Okay. Yeah, good, 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 good. Thanks. So, what happens is then here. Now we decided to make it lazy. So again, let's go back to B dot plus E. That was greedy. 
How do we convert greedy to lazy? We look inside and ask ourselves, do we want to be, do we want to be um, greedy? And we don't. But the thing is, we're not big enough to get like Zen or something like that, so we go lazy. And so that's all I did. I added that question mark there. And now look, it's still true. What's the text that it, that it matched? B. Again, there's other tools we'll talk about in a minute. But that, you know, dash match will still let you let, do a lot of stuff, you know, if, you, if you're careful about remembering to, to pull up the matches. Does that make any sense? Questions, anybody? All right, cool. Yes, please. Um, so in terms of the pattern matching, no. it, it just simply said, it just to say, okay, character at a time? Yep. Yes, it, it, it to, you know, find Well, if you're lazy, then yes, you only, but you know, that could be or inefficient too. I mean, let's, let's stop thinking about it. What if, you know, Alan, like 95% of the cases, it really is beer house that you want. Yeah. You know, I mean, because that, that, it, it, it should be clear by now that you're going to be happiest in regex if you have some knowledge of the kind of data that you're looking at, right? And the better knowledge you have, the <laughs> okay. All right, thanks. Great. So that was great. Engines. <clears throat> that was the essential thing. We got through that. Whew. Okay. We can still got a half an hour. We get this done. Um, regex tools. So there's lots of uh, power. The PowerShell regex tools out there. Uh, there's, there's dash match, uh, dash replace, and dash split. They take regex as well. Here's a really, here's a kind of interesting, silly one. But uh, if you say, if you pass it a string, this is a sentence dash split, and you pass it e dot, for example, then e dot space. I don't, yeah, e dot. Uh, how do you, e dot. Yeah, yeah. Then it ends up yanking whenever it sees an, an e dot, it yanks that out and adds a new line to it. So that's why this, if you've never seen split, that, that, that's what it does. But the idea is that was the sentence, and then afterwards it becomes that. You see, we've got multiple lines out of it. There's some E's and spaces missing. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. I've never found a real world use for it, but it just seems like it'd be wonderfully destructive like if I could just figure out what I could do with it. You know? <laughs> I want to briefly talk about case matching in PowerShell. Uh, it, you know, in the PowerShell world, we often don't care about case, but if you do, then there is, there's a, it, match has a cousin, cmatch. cmatch, and you may know about that because there's also what, is a, there's a c-eek and a c-like, like, or whatever it is. Uh, so you should not be surprised <laughs> that, that we have. There is also a not match, by the way. So all those things are out there. All right, questions? Ultimately, if we're dealing with PowerShell, excuse me, if we're dealing with PowerShell and regex, it's always a good idea to remember that where do we get this from? PowerShell is really merely surfacing the underlying .NET regex classes. And so, but the, the PowerShell guys are, you know, they, they have to make decisions about how, how complicated they're gonna make this for us. And so they decided to shield us from some of this specificity. specificity. And, and so we got more kinds of stuff that we, we can do here. So one way to get to the dot next, dot net, to the dot net regex is that there is, it's a cast. You could do this. I could say something like dollar sign r equals regex cast, and then that is the pattern. So what, you, what we're doing here is we're warming up this thing to be able to do kind of pat, or kind of pattern matches for us. So now I got dollar sign r, it's a regex type of object. And then I can say this, I can say something like, rather than, rather, than mat, uh, rather than dash match, it looks like dollar sign r dot matches. So it's a method. And then inside, there's the target. And so what's that going to do? Well, let's see. So we have, I'm sorry, we got this. Our pattern is dot, dot, bb, dot. What does dot, dot, bb, dot mean? Is that going to ever be greedy? Is dot, dot, is dot, dot, bb, dot, it does dot, dot, bb, dot, is, is that ever gonna become greedy? No. no. Why, what's missing? Plus, plus. plus or asterisk. asterisk, exactly, exactly. So it's, it's never gonna be greedy, it's never gonna be lazy, it's a nice regex. So, <laughs> if I then match that against yabba dabba doo, it's going to find that, oh, look, well, this is the cool thing. The first thing that .NET, that grabbing the, 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 the .NET cast, 
means that we now get multiple responses. Well, that's pretty exciting. No? I don't get that much. That's pretty exciting. You know? Because seriously, the, you know how it is. When you're working with something initially, the more data you can get about it, the happier you are. And so if for no other reason, I would tell you to consider using the regex cast all the time that you're starting to play with this. Because it gives it makes it a little easier. It, can we get the rest of PowerShell to give us all? Absolutely. You know, stay tuned for, for uh, uh, SLS. So, and look what it says. It says true. It said are there captures. We'll talk about captures in a little bit. Um, index, notice where it's where they where we found it. This one was at the zeroth location, at the, at the sixth location. And it actually shows you the text. I like that. I like that. From a pedagogical point of view, if I'm teaching people how to do this, or if I'm just hoping to get this done in the next you know, three hours so that I can then you know, solve some problem or something. I like that. So. Now, if you want the most, any questions on that? Please. I noticed there's more than one capture or one match. No, 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 no sorry, I'll, that was the point I was making. Yeah. The, no, the point I was making was if we did this on the pure PowerShell of dash match, it would give us just this one, right? right? This gives us all of them. And, you know, and because you know that it, that information is sitting in matches, it's then easy to to pull that stuff right out. OK, but if you want total control, if we need total control, then you use new dash object. And basically, what are we doing? Uh, if you've never used new dash object, then the notion is that, that .NET's got this bunch of assembly molds where you can build different stuff for you. That's a, you know, that's a class. And then we just pull down the regex object, and we're going to do it by talking directly to it, and that gives us a few extra things that we could be doing that we weren't doing before. Um, now, by the way, I'm going to give this scrolled off because this, it would be at the building over there. <laughs> New dash uh, object can get a, a bit big. And, uh, and the syntax is in the PowerPoints, I promise. In the next slides, we'll be seeing it. But look what's happening. It says dollar sign regex equals, and you can call it anything. I'm just calling it dollar sign regex because I'm 60 and I can't remember what I did with something a minute later. So, um, New dash object, regex, and then there's, the, there's our pattern again. And then we do all this other stuff, okay? Now, why would I want to do that? Gosh, that looks like what you just had, Mark. Yes, it is similar, but I haven't told you the good part. And that's a, that's a sample run of what that, what that looks like. Looks like what we just saw. Okay, so why is this good, Mark? Well, let's do a sidebar before we talk about that. Sidebar, as you may know, that PowerShell for the last few versions has had a kind of object called a time span. Come on in, guys, we got seats. Come on in. What are you talking about? You know PowerShell. Um, and time span is a chunk of date time, essentially, and you can decide how long you can create one of these things to be. Anybody ever had to use a time span? Yeah, they're, they're, oh, oh, learn them, learn them. They're weird. When you look at them, you're like, why did they do it that way? The Jeffrey must have known. There must have been a reason. But anyway, so. <laughs> Call hell, Jeffrey. He is optics oriented. So, um, anyway, so. With time spans, you can create them by subtracting one date from another. But the other way is you can actually say new dash time span. You can tell it how many seconds, how many minutes, stuff like that. But I don't want that. I want smaller intervals. So you could do something like this. You could say something like, uh, uh, no, no, it looks like dollar sign span equals new dash time span dash seconds one. That's the smallest one you can make officially. But here's an interesting thing. If you have a time span, you can actually add numbers to it, and that will make the time span a little bit bigger. And so if you do this, dollar sign TS span equals, we're going to do a cast to time span, and the integer 1. That will say smallest thing we could possibly have. Now, how many of you played with this kind of stuff before? Oh, because you're going to be surprised. How big is that? It is 0 0.001 milliseconds. Full stop, hang on. I know about this because I do Active Directory stuff, and so I'm looking at dates and times all the time. So I, I, I know more than I wish I did. And I know, and you, pro you probably know, you heard this sometime, but you forgot it. The way most of Windows thinks in terms of time are time ticks that are how long? 100 nanoseconds. You would think. This would be 100 nanoseconds, but it's not. It's, it's way bigger than that. So nevertheless, if you do this, if you ever need a short time span, I'm going to show you an example where you want to, then you say time span cast to 10,000, and that will, build, that will give you a one millisecond time span. OK? 
I know you're saying, why are we using this, Mark? Just trust me, we're, we're getting there. Handling timeouts. If you, if you don't go infinite on one of your regexes, you're not working hard enough, okay? <laughs> so that time's gonna come. And you wanna hear something bizarre? If you build a regex in PowerShell, you can't say, time it out in three minutes. I'm thinking if the regex doesn't get three done in three minutes, uh, I'm leaving, right? You know? So it'd be nice if people have a timeout. Here's the cool part. This is why I'm telling you this. The .NET class includes a timeout. Now, I've got two things about it. First of all, didn't appear until .NET 4.5. And the PowerShell guys, I think, didn't know about it because they, I mentioned, I was talking with regexes about a particular individual in the PowerShell hierarchy. And he was saying that regex was a dumbass idea and why didn't text go away? And I said, yes, that's probably true, but it hasn't. And did you know that, that .NET now lets you do timeout? Because he was starting to say, and you know it goes infinite sometimes. And I said, do you know that that changed in .NET 4.5? And he said, oh. So I'm hoping that very soon we'll see that incorporated in the PowerShell tools. Until then, here's what you do. Yes, that looks messy, just copy it out of the PowerPoint. Here's, here's what it looks like. There's our new dash object. That's our pattern. This is the blah, blah. Regex experts in the room. That's how you set multi-line. Ignore case. Isn't it doing that already? No, and why? Because we're building it straight off .NET, which means it is case sensitive. And I don't know about you, but I just don't need that that often. I have enough reasons that I can blow things up, like feeding Unicode to, as, to a text file. But anyway, so yeah, you don't, you don't do it. Well, I would say you don't do it twice, but I, apparently I'm not that smart. So, and then there's the max time. Now you can do something off of there, and in this case, just for fun, if you have free time, um, build one of these, give it a timeout of three milliseconds. In my experience, on a Windows 10 box with a fairly good processor, everything takes a minimum of about 4.5 milliseconds. Having said that, I just tested all that stuff in my room a few hours ago, and everything's way faster. I don't know what they did. <laughs> no, no, I'm dead serious. I have three regexes I can normally put up, and we're doing this. Down there. So you'll see this about regex engines. People are constantly tweaking them. I don't know what Microsoft did, but they did something in the last six months that has changed the way that this stuff works. Okay. So that's, that's how to get, uh, we talked about getting insensitive. I want to make sure, is there any questions on this? So there's several ways that we say I'm going to be case insensitive. Yes, please. So on your previous slide, yeah. uh, you had uh, the variable max time. Is that something you're assigning? Uh, so dollar sign max time, oh, sorry, is a, is, a, is a time span. Okay. That's, that's, a, that's a time span variable. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're right, I should have used the same one. Should, oh. okay. Thank you, I'll fix that. <laughs> this is why I teach, because I learn more from you guys than you learn from me. So. You get an error. It is an error. You actually get red text, yeah. <laughs> it was funny, when Jeffrey was talking about how they were gonna play with the, the error text, I kept waiting for someone to say, I have an idea, why don't we make it white on black so people can read it, you know? <laughs> it's, like, it's like the first, I love PowerShell, but the first time I used it, I'm like, did you guys hire the wired guys to do the color or something like that? It's just very pretty, can't read it, you know? So, anyway, and yes, I know you can change it. I just get tired of changing it. I mean, because at, at this point, my, I, let me show you something. At this point, if I try to open my, my uh, PowerShell prompt, at this point, um, it takes that long for the thing to get, oh, okay, so it was, it was pretty, oh, that, that's a date time example. That's I just wanted it. I just, it's a one-liner in the profile. I'm happy to share with the community. <laughs> I'm not saying anything about it. I'm just kind of interested when it happens, that's all. <laughs> to follow up on the yeah, please. regex and .NET, you won't get true or false because that's a factor of yes, yes, yes. that's right. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, but 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 you do get the true or false information. You just have to you know yeah. extract it from a, another member. Good. Other questions? Anyway. All right, great. Let's talk about the star of the show. This is the grep for Windows. 
Uh, it's select dash shrink. It basically what they did is all the little quirks I've been talking to you about. Most of them they make it a little easier. Uh, it, it doesn't change the greedy or lazy. If you've got a crappy regex pattern in in dash match, it's going to be a crappy regex pattern in in uh, select string as, as well. And as, as I said, I'm hoping that in the next six months or a year or something like that, that we will see an option for the timeout stuff. That would be just really, really nice. So uh, the notion here is this is nice because it's, it's good for a number of things. First of all, you can point it at a folder full of files, and you can tell it to go look for those files and pull them out and do, the, do all the regex max, matches on those guys. Additionally, it loves the pipeline. It's not pipeline deaf like, you know, like a sad number of things are. You can just pack it with a bunch of stuff. And it's just, and, and you, can, you can get everything that, that you can want. Um, by, by default, by default, it's, it is built to take text files and go boop, 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 boop. It thinks in terms of lines. It is not one of those tools, the, the so-called multi-line tools that see an entire page as being uh, one big line. No, no, it's, it sucks in line by line and it reports line by line. So you give it a, page, a file with 500 lines and 13 of them match, it will show you just the 13 that match. And if you know how to ask it nicely, it'll tell you what position, what line number, what lines are around it to kind of help you, like, you got to go find this stuff. It's, it's something that clearly, you know how, like, sometimes there are, there are things in Microsoft tools where you say, do these guys ever use this stuff? You know, <laughs> right? This is something where those guys use this stuff. It, it has to be because it, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of good stuff in here. Okay. Can select string tail like RepCare? I wish I were a Unix guy. So I, yeah. I, I don't think there is a tail option there in newer version somewhere. Get content get dash wait. Yeah, get okay. content slash wait. Thank you. So you, you wait for tail? Was that what I was hearing? <laughs> I just, no, I wasn't. How does that go? All right. I don't know. I'll, I really, uh, but it, it's in there somewhere, please. The other side of the head, I think. Anyway, sorry, I don't know, <laughs> forgive me. Um, okay, so stuff we got. Pattern is the essential one. And by the way, it's positional pr parameter one, positional parameter two. They so know you're doing folders. That positional, there's only two positional parameters. And the second one is uh, what folder and what, what wildcard should we be using to pulling the files, pull the files off. So that's, that's the first thing, okay? Uh, case sensitive, we'll, we'll make it case sensitive. All matches, again, same story. What if I have 13 lines, I pull one out, and one of those lines has five copies? <clears throat> well, our default behavior in, in regex is what? We don't really care what's in there. It's just the yes or no question. But if you want those things, you can, ask, you can add dash uh, all matches, and then it'll return all of those. I found this tremendously useful. I was trying to go through my Outlook and find all the non-delivery reports for my mailing list that I used to do. And you, know, you pull this stuff off, and it's hierarchical data, but SLS is smart enough that it not only grabbed the emails off of the Outlook object, it also then could grab out the attachments and scan them. It's, 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 it's a great tool. I mean, I just can't tell you how often we're, if, if you're doing regex stuff, at some point you're going to find this thing. So let's see, what else? This is another great one. So there's path. Path says, where is it? Literal path is in those situations where you want to give it, give it a literal that perhaps has a dot, a star, or something in it. And this way, it knows that, it, that there's no wild cards. In contrast, path can have wild cards. That's the only difference. Dash context is very interesting. It's dash context and then an integer. And that says, you know this is a file with 10,000 lines. When you find one, do me a favor. Show me the one on top, above it, and below it. Or show me the five above it and the five below it. That's gorgeous. It's just absolutely gorgeous. If you're ever trying to go through big piles of files, which I, I've done because I'm trying to collect my old columns and you know, see which ones might have some value. Not many at this point because they're old, but you know, so it's all good stuff. Any questions? Let's see some. Let's see some examples. So uh, let's let's stuff the pipeline. We'll have a string. Um, I just love 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 SLS, comma. You love it too. Okay. Let's punch that into SLS. And remember, what's the first positional parameter? The pattern. So all I got to do here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive me. SLS is the al SLS is the alias for um, select string. It was taking me a second. I know SLS. What does it stand for? So, okay. so what's that going to show us? It's, it's going to, uh, well, let me, time, get short. Uh, basically, this is showing us the stuff that we want. Because you see the dot matches? 
Ed in the dot matches there is going to show us all of those matches. So it, it's, I hope you get a, a feel. Here's, here's an example. Um, when I did that, you get a lot of data. And so if you pump it out to OGV, here's an example. I had a couple of text files, and they had some lines. And I'm looking for the number of times, and I know you can't see it. So, um, so but, so that's your, so this is your command up here. Now there, there's our command up there. Select string path. It goes to this particular folder. Oops. Pattern saw all matches. Punch it into outgrid view. And so what does it show us? It shows us up top. There's a there's the yes or no for for uh, ignore case. And then there's line number. I found this and what what text field did I do? Then there's the line itself. It shows you the whole line. Then. I know it's not like I'm really excited about a commandlet, but it's just, this is nice. It does pretty much almost exactly what I want, and you don't really find that uh, that often without writing a script, you know. So that's the path we got it from. Again, what was the pattern? S-A-W. And then, look what we got here. So like here, this line, I've got a saw here. I saw a plane. I wish I saw a flower. I used a saw to cut down a tree. I saw a, a sawwall cat. Um, they, they don't exist, but it's just, you know. It was a good adjective, so I thought I'd do it. Uh, so there's two, and notice how it reports it. See, so the saw and saw over there. So, make sense? Questions? Anybody? Okay. Great. As I've said before, as I've suggested before, one of the things about the dot cannot do is dot cannot match a new line. Dot can't match a new line. You can, you can change that, though. You can change that behavior. It's all, either called a single line mode or multiple line mode. And they're easy. There's just a few switches to do, and it's right there on the PowerPoint. I won't go into detail, because I want to do some other stuff. Here is one of the best pieces of advice I can give you. Don't paint yourself in the corner. Don't think you can do this by yourself. Um, you can, but it'll take a lot of time. Let's be very clear. The thing I love, you know, the coolest thing about PowerShell, I can't tell you how many times I've had friends who are brilliant at .NET coders. And I don't know if you know this. Are there any developers in the room? OK, stop listening for a minute. So when, <laughs> when, when I go to developer conferences, they're like, Mark, you're a great speaker. Oh, well, thank you. That's really terrific. Uh, do, do I get a check? And, and then you know, some of these conferences don't pay so well. And uh, so uh, and where was I? Uh, oh, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just, so, oh, yes. So they'll, they'll grab me. We'll have dinner. I say, why do you work with IT pros? I say, what do you mean? They're, just, they're so dumb. I said, they're not dumb. What's your IP address? <laughs> we don't get no respect. So, but the great part is, well, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, 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 yeah. What can you do with that PowerShell? And then you show them new dash objects. Because, like, if you're a .NET coder, you can read the MSDN documentation because that's so helpful. And <laughs> or alternatively, what you'll probably do is you end up spending three hours writing some code to test the stupid thing out. Because that's the problem in PowerShell and in dot, because dot is PowerShell, right? Uh, but I mean, th is that you have to look at an object and you think, oh, an AD user, does it have all the information that I want? We well, gotta write a lot of code to test that if you're just doing it for Visual Studio. But what can we do? We do new dash object and we can poke around with get member. And you show it to them and all of a sudden the faces are like, I want that. I so want that. I mean, the great thing about PowerShell is the, is, is the, the, uh, the immediate gratification. You need that for regex, too. And so if this sounds scary, save yourself some time. There's some great online testers, or you can buy them. There's a $25 one called regex buddy uh, that I'm told is very nice. Somebody showed me Expresso. Expresso, is that its name? Yeah. You said it's free? It's free. And that's what, a Windows app or something like that? Yeah. Cool. Um, I like some of these locations. Regextra.com is neat. This is wonderful. This is a free thing these guys put up. They've got a cheat sheet about all of those regex operators we're not going to have time to get into. Get into. And um, so, I mean, it's, just, it's really terrific stuff. The other one is regex 101 is very nice. Now, you should be aware that regex engines can be a little bit different. They can be just a little bit different from each other. And so, no, I mean, I mean that. I mean, look, 95% of the regexes will run just fine on any engine. But you will find some funny little dark corners where maybe, I don't know, the Java engine behaves differently than the .NET engine. So it would be nice to have one that's based on the .NET engine. And there is one. It's called, um, uh, it's called uh, Regex Hero. 
It's online, it's online and it runs off the .NET engine, which is great. The only problem is it requires <laughs> Silverlight. There's a large company out of uh, Redmond that's trying to kill that product for reasons that make no sense to me at all. But those are, those are cool things to have, okay? Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Regex Workbench is a .NET that runs on your desktop. Oh, nice, Regex Workbench. workbench. Yeah, I think it's a microphone. Do I have that Visual Studio to no. run it? No. Cool, thank you. Regex Workbench, thanks. <laughs> and that's a free download or, okay. Or you have to go to Software Assurance and pay them an extra hundred dollars a week or something. How many people are in your building? Only one is using this tool. It doesn't matter, how many heartbeats are there in the building? <laughs> Regex? Golf. Tell me about Regex Golf. So you, you search for it. Uh, basically, it'll give you a list of words to match and a list of words not to match. And you select the pair of two swings. So oh. the car is, hey, you can yeah. the character and so can everybody else. You can just do it yourself. And you, and you know, thank you. You brought up a very important point I was going to forget. There is no right answer when it comes to regex. Um, people who know regex are smart people and they love to outdo each other. I mean, never walk into a room with regex people and imagine that you can tell them this is the proper pattern to detect email addresses. Uh, you will never, none of you will get out of the room alive because, I, I, no, I'm serious, regex is fun and everybody who loves it has a website. And so, no, it's true, and they have forums. And so if you're really stuck, you could do this. Just post on the forum, I don't know how to do this. Inside of five minutes, you will, A, have 30 different answers that will all work. And there'll be three dead members of the forum because they will, will have been, you know. So, seriously, I mean, efficiency, yes. I mean, you know, don't make your regexes three minutes. But, uh, but really don't sweat, you know, don't sweat getting it too, you know, too heavy, deep, and real, okay? So, uh, the other thing, too, and there's an example of, there's, there are a million sites out there. And by the way, they're usually re really nice folks, you know, unless you're, you suggest that you have a regex that's more efficient than, than you're an enemy. So the only thing left is regular expression syntax. I've got just, Eight minutes, but let me do a little bit here. So, first is a character class. Character class. Sometimes I want to be able to say this or that or that or that. We do that with square brackets, and you can have a range zero to nine. What does that mean? That means that will match anything from zero to nine. B to V will match anything from the letter B to the letter V. Or we can have a pile of things. That's called a range. This is called a set. A set is where you just have Characters. I created this set, what's that do? Makes vowels, okay? You can put them together. You could have B dash C F B N. What does that mean? It takes B, it takes C, it takes F and B and N. Note the square brackets around it, they're called custom classes. Why are they called custom classes? Because there are some built-in, baked into the box classes. Is it making sense so far? If, when we get past, when we get past them, the other ones will all start to fall apart. These are the ones to get started with. For example, I had this thing: uh, is th five a digit match zero to nine? Is it going to match? It is because zero to nine fits against that five. Is there a digit match? And here, what is it? We're doing a through f, five, six, seven, h dash j. So what we're saying is, we'll take numbers, but the numbers that we'll take will be five or six or seven, and so. Is there a digit there? Well, five matches the five. Does that make sense? I'm sorry I'm speeding up, but I want to you know, just run through it. You can see that they're easy once you just see them. And all these pages that you're going to have uh, have got examples. So you know, check them out. But also, there are probably people who do a better job explaining this to me, so you know, online stuff can help as well. OK, regex also includes some predefined classes. They are things that are prefixed with a backslash and then, and then a number, uh, excuse me, a letter. So for example, uh, backslash w. Little w means word characters. They have defined certain things as being characters that are in words. So notice, what do you have in the word characters? Uh, a to Z, A to Z, zero to nine, underscore, um, in ANSI. Uh, yeah, I would maybe put some other stuff, but th they don't, okay? Notice the lowercase. So like, uh, so for example, there's a, a quick, quick jump ahead. So what's backslash little w do? Backslash little w means one character from the what group? Backslash little w. What's the class? What's in that, that class? Word characters. Word characters. So what? A to Z, 0 to 9, underscore. OK? Good. How could I find? I had a pile of text. You know enough to do this now. So any character we imagine in a word, it's not exactly right, but it's close enough. Every character we have in a word, 
can be described as backslash little w. How can I find the word? Well, we've got a class called backslash little w. That's just one character, though. How would I say one or more word characters? Backslash w with a quantifier, which was? Does that make sense? If you haven't heard that, think about that. That's where regex starts to take off. That's where you've got your foot on the accelerator. In other words, the only things. So it's technically speaking, then dot is a predefined class. Sir? Um, full stop is a predefined class in itself, then. It's. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's a good point. You're right. The, the dot essentially is a predefined class that matches everything, except new line. Good call. I like that. So does, does slash capital D match new line? Um, no, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I know that, I know that, that backslash little s, backslash big s do include new line. From what you're saying, it may be, it would lo be logical, but, but I'm sorry, I've never, I've never tried it. It's a really, really, really good question. Anyway, so, um, uh, so little w means word, word characters, backslash big w, means anything but that. So it tends to be something and it's inverse. The lowercase is the something, the capital is the inverse. Backslash D is digits, zero through nine. What would backslash big D bit be? Everything but zero through nine. And so you can, you can create your own character classes. Um, S is interesting. Backslash S is, is white space, which generically means different things to different people, but here it means these particular things. The, mostly we're looking at what? Line feeds and character turns, which boils down to did you make the text file with notepad or any or all the other tools, right? So, oh, <clears throat> another thing that's very sexy about this also is that there are some tools where if you feed Windows tools a, a, an in quotes Unix file, in other words, a text file that doesn't have CRL at the, at the end of it, that it'll suck it up anyway. Um, all the PowerShell stuff I've come across in this area has no problem with that. I mean, even a GC for that matter. I was surprised, I never noticed that before. Even a, even a Git content will, will handle text file, which is really, really nice. And you know why? Remember I told you to download the file with the million words or something like that? It, they're all off Unix sites, so, so they only have line feeds at the end of them, which means Notepad's not gonna like them. You know? but, but everything else will like it. Okay, now uh, at this point, it is a law that if you're doing a regex presentation, you're not allowed out of the room until you've done the social security example, okay? So it's like a rule, I don't want to go to jail. So we know that digit is what, slash D? So our matching pattern is going to be backslash little d, little d, little d, why? Because social security numbers are one, you know, dot, dot, uh, you know, three, and then two, and then four. Make sense? Except for the 20% of the room that says, what's a social security number? We don't have those in my country. I know, I know, sorry. I don't know what your social security numbers look like or I would do that, okay. so anyway. So then, uh, so we grab that, it matches, we can see, you know, what, in this case, the, it matched properly. There's our, there's our, our it, it was, sure, it's true, and the value it pulled out was that. So, you, this either be good for, for, for checking if any of that bad PII is there or, or for stealing that bad PII if you have access to the data, yeah. so. So we talked about quantifiers. Uh, we've already met two quantifiers. One quantifier is plus. It's because it amps things up. So if I say, if I, if I give you a character and I say plus, what does that mean? That, how many? One and up. What's a star? Zero and up. We can be more specific. Maybe you want to say I only want to have, oh, I don't know, somewhere between two, and, I got an X here, and I expect to see somewhere between two and seven X's. These would be, by the way, consecutive again. If there's something in the middle, the only thing that matches this is x, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Would x match it? X would not match it. Why would x fail? Because the minimum we want is two x's. Okay? Does this make sense? You guys are getting quiet. Okay, good. There's the optional qualifier. This is a great one. Now, I spend a lot of time out of the country and I love my friends that I see outside of the country, but for some reason they don't know how to spell things properly. Because, no really, Brits, great people, Canadians, love them. They're, I mean, they're like five meters away, you know? See, I even sounded Canadian from over there, I said meters. And so, but I mean, but this Kalur thing, uh, 
So, <laughs> labor, you know, so what happened was, well, she went to labor and didn't survive. If it had been labor, she could have, could have survived it. And so the trick is, you, this quantifier, the question mark, this says zero or one. So it'll accept one ooh in color or no lures ooh in color. <laughs> now, unfortunately, it would also match that. <laughs> so we're getting there, okay? But so, see, the, the question, that's what the optional one does. And, but, uh, so this means oh, zero or one as in like that. So if, if your pattern said, said C-L-O-U question mark R, it would match color and color, okay? Whose fault was that, by the way? Why does, why does, why does, <laughs> why does, why do the other countries that were once helpless victims of the British Empire all misspell things in the same way, but the Americans don't? And because, they, they no, no, what the man said. Daniel Webster. Daniel Webster wanted us to be a distinct language, which was a dumbass idea. And that's why, like, like everybody else spends the fence with a C and we do S. And, um, oh, and it's time for me to stop. I'm so sorry. Hang on. Let me, um, yikes. See that nice, nice Jeff Hicks man in the back? He did not even come down and take the podium, see? So um, that's all we had. You're going to get the rest of the PowerPoint. Um, let me ask you some questions. Have I convinced anybody to go out and play with regex? Have I frightened anyone away? I say, I'm never going to do that ever again. <laughs> okay. that's, 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 that's entirely possible. Okay. So I hope it's inspired. Remember that it's okay to cheat. There's lots of examples. You're not cheating them. I mean, you know, use the online regex te tester. Um, select string is the thing. And uh, with that, let me say for the very last time ever, I really appreciate you guys being here. Go back and learn some stuff from that. And remember to use this knowledge for good and not for evil. Thank you. Thank you.